Welcome again to Devotion and Prayer with the devotional Maranatha, The Lord is Coming by Ellen G. White. Today's reading is January the 25th, The Counterfeit Revival. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Second Timothy 3 verses 1, 2, and 5 Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The Spirit and power of God will be poured out upon His children. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has a planted love for God and His Word. Many, both of ministers and people, will gladly accept those great truths which God has caused to be proclaimed at this time to prepare a people for the Lord's second coming. The enemy of souls desires to hinder this work. And before the time for such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. In those churches which he can bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out. There will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. Multitudes will exult that God is working marvelously for them when the work is that of another spirit. Under a religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world. In many of the revivals which have out in many of the revivals which have occurred during the last half century, the same influences have been at work, to a greater or less degree, that will be manifest in the more extensive movements of the future. There is an emotional excitement, a mingling of the true with the false, that is well adapted to mislead. Yet none need be deceived. In the light of God's word, it is not difficult to determine the nature of these movements. Whenever men neglect the testimony of the Bible, turning away from those plain soul-testing truths, which require self-denial and renunciation of the world, there we may be sure that God's blessing is not bestowed. And by the rule which Christ himself has given, has given, ye shall know them by their fruits. Matthew 7 verse 16. It is evident that these movements are not the work of the Spirit of God. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. 2 Timothy 3 verses 1, 2 and 5 The Counterfeit Revival let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, praising you for being our God, our Lord, our Ruler. We praise Christ for being our King, our High Priest, our Brother. We praise the Holy Spirit for being our Comforter, our Spirit of Truth, our Guide the one who gives us the spirit of prophecy, who leads our writers, the men who wrote the Bible, and the lady who wrote the right, well, the testimonies, Ellen White who wrote her writings. But Lord, we thank you for these writings. We thank you for your work. And Lord, we now confess we are sinners, fallen short, unable to do anything without you. But we thank you that you've offered the free gift of salvation the free gift of justification, the free gift of sanctification, and one day the wonderful gift of glorification. So right now we claim your justification, your sanctification, you're saving us, you're cleansing us, you're purifying us. Give us that Holy Spirit. Fill us with that latter rain power that we can go and do your work. 
and win souls and give the loud cry your loud message. But Lord, when we humble ourselves, make the time, because we've been claiming your promises to humble ourselves, to get into the word, to get into prayer, to get into witnessing, to, for you to remove the sin from us, to have us appreciate and esteem your word, to care for one another. When you do this, which we claim by faith that you will do and you are doing daily, Satan will be upset. And he will try to distract and prevent it with a false revival. It will seem wonderful. People will stand up and praise the Lord and say they felt the Spirit. But you gave us a test, Lord. The test was by their fruits. The test was to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We thank you for your word that we can stand on. Thus saith the Lord. Your word says, many revivals have been like this. They've accomplished, apparently, seemingly, a great work. This is the work of Satan. Just yesterday we discussed, we prayed, why, if we're not being persecuted, why is this crowd coming in? And now you reveal it, Lord. It's a false revival. Spirit of feelings emotions, but the word is not connected, people not turning from sin. And we can test it, Lord. It says, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Do, does your church, the Seventh-day Adventists, we can't talk about the other churches, they're feeling the same problem, but let's look at ourselves, Lord. In our church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, are people spending more time with God or with the pleasures of the world? The pleasures of the world. Are men humble or are they boasters? We brag like nothing else. Are men covetous? Just like the world is the churches. We will get the latest things, the latest gadgets, the latest vehicles, the latest clothes, and we're broke. But we have to do this because we are covetous, we are greedy. Do we have a form of godliness? We show up to church, but we don't show up early. We show up divine service or before the sermon. That is definitely a form. We don't go to Wednesday night, very few. We don't go, Sunday night is dead. AY is dying. This is a form of godliness. God never said for us to show up for a particular hour. We are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but we have. It is forsaken, but we think that in order to make it to heaven, I have to show up on a certain day. That is legalism, which is false, a false revival. We are trying to be saved by showing up to church for divine service. This is a false revival. This is in our church to the Lord. We have a form of godliness, but we deny the power. And the power is, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jews and to the Gentiles. The gospel should change us, Lord. It should make us not boastful, not covetous. Oh, I forgot, Lord, disobedient to parents. We in the church know that we are in a time when children are the most disrespectful ever. Ever. Whether they were born in the church or whether they were brought in the church, there's no difference. Most disrespectful ever. This is the test, Lord. By their fruits, Lord, for years in the Bahamas Conference, South Bahamas Conference, and throughout the church, we've been bragging about our numbers. The other devotional says that we've had 2 million members, Lord, in 1972. We are now around 16 million. 
But Lord, the truth is we have numbers, big numbers. But holiness is down. Bible study is down. Prayer is down. Respect for your word is down. The writings of Ellen White are down. Lord, this is proof positive. We are the victims of a false revival. We have these crusades. The music plays. The drums start. The music plays. The people stand up. They wave their hands. They shout hallelujah. The crowd in the hundreds are standing and singing. But Lord, when the music stops, when the preaching series is over, when we return to church, where is the crowd? Where are the people? Where are the people for Wednesday night meeting? Where are the people for Sunday night meeting? Where are the people for community service? The crusades have been turned into social clubs, entertainment centers. It's a form of godliness, Lord. Emotional godliness, a feeling. We say it and we say it proudly. I'm going to get my blessing. No, 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 Lord. Blessed is he who read it. Blessed is the poor in spirit. Blessed is the merciful. Blessed is the meek. We are blessed all the times. Yes, we are blessed when we go to church. But Lord, we are blessed all the times. So we have this concept that going to church makes me more spiritual. I have to have that relationship before I even head towards the building. If not, it will do me no good. But this is where we're at, Lord. We are the victims of a false revival. We're the victims and we're to perpetrate ourselves, myself included. For most of my life, I had no interest in your word. No interest in the spirit of... Pro I did not like Ellen White. I'll admit that. For most of my life, I did not like Ellen White. But through your grace, you got me to eventually read it. And I didn't like it. Read it again. I didn't like it. Then years later, read it again. And I loved it. But Lord, we are the victims and also the abusers, the, the attackers of a false revival. And we need you to fix it, Lord. We need to fix it by your grace. This is a great work, greater than we can do by ourselves. And the false revival has been going on for decades. From the times Ellen White has been creeping and creeping in. It's getting full sway now, Lord. I blame not the pastor. I blame not the elder. Blame not any president because this has been a continual process, Lord. But Lord, the buck must stop here. And it must start with me. Whatever false revival is in me, take it from me, Lord. I claim that promise again for you to purify me. Purify me and cleanse me, Lord. Be with your church, Lord. Purify us and cleanse us, Lord. And help us in our church to stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord. Help us individually to hold up your distinct truths that others can be awoken, awoken to your truth, Lord. So they can see the distinct truths and they can pick up the light. They can share the light and others can pick up the light and it will share and spread, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Remove the false revival. Help us while it is still time to turn to you, Lord, that people can start to see peace, gentleness, kindness, love, patience, godliness, holiness, faith, not boasting, not covetousness, not blasphemy, not disobedience, not lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, lovers of God more than lovers of pleasure. Do this work in us, Lord. We need this, Lord. When you do this work in us and you remove the false revival, all that will remain is your true primitive godliness, which is so distinct from what we're doing right now. It will be marked, markedly distinct. 
that when people will see it, they'll say, wait, everyone else is offering me something. But I see this over here. And they will see the results of the distinct gospel, Lord. Do this in us, Lord. We cannot, we cannot at all do it of our own. Start with me. Start with my family. Start with my church. But bring about this true revival of primitive godliness in the word where we will say to the law and to the testimony. We will stand on that and that alone. Not on the teachings of men. Not on the feelings of our emotions. We will not feel that God is working because we feel it. Because often God works when we feel it negatively. Lord, you will prick us, you will hurt us, but that is still you working. So let us not face, feel our emotions. There are times we don't want to pray. That is the best time to pray. So Lord, we will not have a true revival based on how we feel. We'll have a true revival based on your word, which will then impact how we feel, but that will be the result of the revival, not the proof or the source of it. Be with us, Lord. We claim this. We cannot do this. So we claim the power of heaven. This is why we need your power, your Holy Spirit. We need the portion we have now because we can do it now. But we need that fullness, that power to carry it to its fullness, its full effect. But whatever you give us now, Lord, let us use that. But fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. We claim your promise. We claim your purification. We claim your true revival. And we claim it in love. Love for everyone. Praying for everyone in the church. From Ted Wilson, from the president, all the way down. To all the members. Lord, work it out in us. That we love and we pray. Give us this true revival. Remove the counterfeit. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen.